Well, how do there, chums? Design, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm going to be learning the autophage law in No Man's Sky, because now I know all the words of the autophage. It's time to go and find myself a dissonant Corvax system. In fact, I think this might work in any Corvax system. You know what? Let's just try it in any Corvax system and see if it comes up with a dissonant spot at an actual archive. So, firstly, let's go into the galactic map. Chikapa! Let's go and find ourselves a callback system by using the filter to go to life form. And then we're going to go and find ourselves a blue star. So there we go. We're going there. Heck yes, we're on our way. Oh, for fudge sake. I will be there in a moment. I reconvene. Right, so I've arrived at Cotage just in a normal Corvax system of space. There's a courtesy flash. Planet down there. Let's, let's just go there. Fudge it. We're on our way to Wesenda. Of course. And once I get to the planet's surface, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Righty ho, landing on said planet, jumping out of the old shifty ship. And uh, I'm going to be calling in my freighter. Now, on board my freighter, I've got my exocraft sort of initiator console thing that lets me just call in any of my exocrafts. I'm going to call in this one because it's got a pretty darn freaking awesome scanner that picks up monoliths. So here we go. Let's go into the old scanner. Let's head on over to here. Chicka boom! Now, to get all the echo camps and to get the monoliths that actually show this sort of purple spot to get the law to initiate and the new Atlantid multi-tool, you're going to have to have also managed to have done the purge and also the traces of metal quest line. So hopefully a lot of what I'm showing you now makes proper logical sense and I don't have to go to town and tell you how to get every single bit of technology to do those first initial steps because you will need an economy scanner, a conflict scanner and the actual tech for the freighter to bring in your actual exocraft and the upgrades to your scanner for your exocraft. So there's quite a fair few prerequisites. This is very much end game type shizzle right now. People! Right, so let's head on over. Let's see if we get the little purple radial point or whatever. Oh, it's not just limited to dissonant systems. You get it at all Corvax systems and all Corvax monoliths. That's good to know. Anyway, let's slaver this with Atlantium. Chicka boom. Now, this Atlantium stuff that I've got here, you can only get that in dissonant systems. It's the purple crystals on the purple planets. So here we go. Let's go and, um, well, you can interact with this if you want to and take a look at the new Atlantid multi tool that's inside of here. But this is not giving you any new lore. And um, that's kind of funky. Kind of nice. If you like that kind of thing. Right, well, let's head on up here. Let's get our first bit of lore. Now, the lore in these goes round. It's reciprocal. So you just keep going. It'll just keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So we just keep going until it repeats. But hopefully we're going to get the full lore cycle. And it doesn't really matter what order you've hit this up in. I hear the distant voices of the Corvax entities who once worshipped here. And yet, there are other voices. Dissident. Unmistakable. Growing ever louder. I close my eyes and listen. Well, I need to open my eyes again so I can read the next bit of text. Sorry. Go on. Many were erased at the time of her death. In darkness and in glass we waited. Well, that sounds painful. I hope you had padded trousers, my friend. Yeah, sitting in glass waiting. That's not good. I open my eyes, but all I can see is darkness. Sounds like you're blind, my friend. There is a click with a rush. I hear their screams all around me. They're electronic owls. <laughs> Something like that, maybe. I don't know. Another click, and then a stench of burning floods my skull. A sickening blend of sweetness and smoke. Sounds like a family barbecue of mine. It's, it's not so bad. A click, and I can see. The earth is riven. Everything burns. Am I going to flee, scream, or dislocate? What? Dislocate what, my friend? All right, budget. I'm going with dislocate because that sounds the most weirdest. Boom. Another click. Well, if you dislocate things, you're going to get the clicks. Ah, oh, yeah. It's all gone. The screams, the smell, the fire and the chaos. It's a comfort at first. That's what a lot of people say when they leave one of my family barbecues. But this is not oblivion of sleep. I am still here, present and aware, as I drift into the endless of nothing. All I have to remember is that final image of destruction. The world burning. Frickin' heck. Yes. 
Seconds, hours, days pass. Panic grows. I feel every tick. And it is just nothing. It's oblivion, my friend. And then another click. The vision ends. I'm returned. I've never felt such relief. Hey, girls. Okay, so that's the first snippet of lore. Now, oh my god, look at these creatures. Aren't they freaking majestically weird? Holy fudge and ori, there's a whole flock of them. Fly, my pretties, fly. They're really not pretty, are they? Anyway, let's um, let's call in my old exocraft. Chicka da boom, chicka da pow pow. Run on over and let's scan for my next planet. No, not planet. Um, monolith. Monolith number two. Chicka pow. Alien monolith detector located. It's over there, my friends. Let's go there then. It's an hour away, but I will be there lickety split in my ship. I guess. Okay, touching down at my next monolith. Now, it's just the same as before, people. You have to go to the purple sort of spot and up rises a knowledge stone. And it's a weird one because it's got all these glyphs on. And yes, you slaver it with the Atlantheums. Chicka pow, chicka boom. And chicka darn. Heck yes, I have. And then after you've done that, the whole thing will go purple. You head on up here and you get the purple Atlantean law. If you don't do that first step, you just get the normal law. You get the normal puzzle. So there you go. The light of the Atlantidum flowing through the monolith is strangely comforting. I hear a deep and steady drone, reassuring and familiar. The sounds, the wor these words lull me and my vision swims as I fall into their embrace. Oh, quite lovely. Become the Void Mother. Okay, this, this could take some doing. I have got acting skills, but we, we can try. Hmm, void mothery type voice. Let's see what I come up with. There we go. Though I cannot see them, I feel them. Countless entities crawl across me. The children swarm in my every fold. <laughs> Sounds a bit something like freaking salad fingers, doesn't it? There we go. They should repulse me, but instead I feel indescribable joy. I know these tiny beans are safe, and these brings me the deepest of happiness. <laughs> For God's sake, I'm losing the plot, people. Okay, we've got breathe, we've got to cry, we've got to sing. Okay, let's hear the Void Mother sing. Here we go, boom. I let the emotions fly through me. These tiny love forms are mine to protect, and I know each of their lives intimately. The feeling is indescribable. There we go. That's my best Void Mother's singing voice. It's too early in the morning for this, people. It really is. And then I feel myself start to crumble. I'm being pulled apart from within, from without. I cannot tell. My children scream as their world begins to collapse. Ah, oh, fudge this. Okay, I okay. guess. As I am carved into a thousand pieces, there is pain. But more than that, there is anger. Anger for each of my children. I am the same, and I have failed them. <laughs> Fudging heck. Oh, come on. That was surely enough. Okay, I'm fine. As my final pieces is destroyed, the vision ends. I am whole once more, but my children... Thank fudge, that's over. I don't want to be the Void Mother ever again, people. Heck, no, I don't. Okay, right. Well, I think you get the general gist of what I'm doing here, apart from freaking bringing you moments of insanity. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be bringing in my freaking Exocraft again. We're going to go to the next monolith. I know, it's a riveting adventure. Hopefully, we're going to learn some more. But so far, we have learned that the Void Mother is made up of her children, or is missing her children. I think the autophages are but them. Hey, girls? Right, well, let's go and hit this up. Fudge and hack. I'm just going to get myself a cup of tea. I'm going to go over to that other monolith. I think I'm going to go fill myself up a cup of tea, and I'll be right back with you people. I guess I will. Well, how do that, Jums? I'm back with a cup of tea, and I'm at the next monolith, I guess. I know, right? That's my own brew of tea, that. It's freaking delicious. I need my headset on. Anyways, you get all sorts here. Acting, voice acting and that at its very best. I should get an Oscar for that performance. Right, anyway, let's head on over here. Let's get slavering the Atlantium. Lovely, lovely. 
So I'm, I'm not going to show this step again. The next, the next video, I will just be climbing the stairs to the monolith to give you a lore, my friends. So let's head on over. Right, okay. So when you first interact, this first bit of text you get here, you're all going to be able to read this. The bit that comes up in blue is the bit that I had to learn all the freaking Atlantean words for from the auto pages. Anyway, I place my hands upon this relic and I feel the power of this ancient sight pour through my veins. Words begin to take shape in my mind. It's these blue words here. These are the ones that I had to learn from the auto pages. And to be honest, I don't think through the whole of this lore that these really tell you too much, apart from that bit before that you become the Void Mother. Choose the destiny of the Disruptor. Doors into darkness may not always remain open. Okay, cool. I blink, and when my eyes open, I have exchanged places with the monolith. A tower over once what was myself. What? What? Does that mean I've become stone? I, I guess so. Petrified. I, they, perform a ritual upon the stone. I feel every glyph they carve into my skin. Like a tattoo, but more horrific, I'm imagining, because they would have had to have done it with a freaking chisel. Against my will, I'm a torrent asunder. A portal opens within me, and the beings below crosses its threshold. I close my mind. I open my mind. I go for open, I guess. Why the fudge not? I open my mind and allow the interloper to pass through the portal. They emerge from their passage, ready to explore a world I cannot see. Days pass, and the being returns. They place a small offering at my feet, allowing me a tiny glimpse at the adventures they have been upon. The vision ends, but the offering remains. At my feet! Am I going to get a freebie? Yes, I got a freebie! I guess I did. I got myself some dino bones. Lovely. Jubbly. I guess that they are. Added to my standings and all that sort of shenanigans. Lovely jubbly. Well, you know what? I will meet you guys. You guys! Patiently. Wait there. I'm just going to call in my exocraft. I'm going to you know, hit on up the scanner. And I'm going to be finding myself yet another monolith. These creatures on this planet are freaking hideous. I'll give you the coordinates, just in case you want to do this on the same planet as me at some point. I guess. Anyways, let's, uh, let's scan for the old monolith. I'll see you at that monolith, okay, people? See you there. Righto, people. The portal is activated. I say portal. You know, the doohickey. Anyway, there you go. There's the actual code for this planet if you do want to come to the same planet as me and do this. It has got honey structures all over it. You can shoot the honey and get sticky honey. I guess you can. Not that it really helps so much, apart from cooking. Right, well, let's hit on up this. Well, let's, let's do this. My hands rests upon the cold stone of the monolith. A voice piercing cries out my response to my touch. There is nothing to fear in her lattice. Let your eyes become glass. I'm quite happy with mine being freaking organic. Glass eyes are freaking creepy, especially if you don't need them. You know, if you need a glass eye, fine. But otherwise, no. Okay, I try to move my hand away and I realize I cannot. Who put super glue on this freaking thing? My fingers are webbed with living fragments of purple. A crystalline infection that begins to spread along my arm. You know what? I'm turning into a Ribena man. Soon I am enveloped. My eyes, my lungs, my blood, all frozen in amethysts. To my surprise, I do not die. Oh, my days. Okay, well, I'll go for weight. Might as well, might not. I should give in. Give in. I close my eyes and I surrender to the encroaching Atlantidium. As I'm carried into the crystal void, I hear the echoes of countless entities, their resonance vibrating through the ever-present glass. Each note is so lost, so sad. They long for harmony. It's like the Spice Girls. They never did find harmony, did they, really? I mean, they had a little bit of a catchy... No, I'm going off on a tangent. It doesn't matter. Cool. And then I'm let go. My eyes clear. And I am returned. I guess I am. Through the visions is over. The lost entities remain with me. Their sound echoing in my mind. I guess. Ooh, ah, just a little bit. Ooh, ah, a little bit more. That wasn't even the Spice Girls, Captain Steve, was it? I don't know. I think it was. It might have been. Am I thinking of the cartoons? Ting, tang, walla walla, bing, bang. I don't know. 
Anyway, you see what I mean? Spice Girls. They carried a note. They were catchy for a bit, weren't they? I'm going right anyway. Let's uh, let's jump into here. Let's bring on up another mother left. Chicka boom! I see you there, people. And we take to the stairs, and we take to the mother left, and we hit on up. It's law. The Atlantean aura that fills the air begins to thicken. As I approach the monolith, my vision narrows. My hearing grows faint and muffled. A lone voice cries out through the fog. He gets an old, Captain Steve. You're losing your vision and your hearing. No, it didn't say that. Let's see what it says. A broken entity requires assistance. Will you choose to save them? Of course. I am the captain, the hero of the day. Chikaboom. The haze that surrounds the monolith shifts, and I see a robotic lap form approach. Where this entity should have arms, there is only shattered metal stumps. Ah, metal stump. Game. They kneel before the stone and make their offering. Do nothing or offer your own arm. Right, I've got organic arms. You're a robot. This is not going to help thee. I'm going to say do nothing. That's probably the wrong thing. I still, I stay still and silent, and I watch the entity beg before the monolith. Their pleas go unheard, but they do not move. Over time, the entity seizes up. Their joints decay. Their power cells leak and die. They crumble, leaving nothing but rust. Hmm. Can I have that? Rusted metal. I can turn that into ferrite dust. The fog parts, and I am alone. I learned nothing new. Still gained freaking autophage, sort of. It went up, it didn't go down. Well, oh, that's a bonus then. Isn't that freaking weird? You would have thought there would have been a bit of a forfeit for that one. Maybe I should have offered my own arm. Oh well, I can't imagine it would have resulted in much more of a benefit to me though. Heck no. Yeah, you could have gone to a second hand shop, my freaking robot friend. No, I don't see how offering up an organic arm to a robot was going to do anything, apart from turning him into a cyborg. Oh, I could have turned him into a cyborg! Damn it! Yes, anyway, I'll see you at the next monolith. I'm going to have some more of my lovely Captain Steve's brew. If you do want to try my own breed of tea, you can find it on my About page on my YouTube. Yes, it's under my links area. Hmm, go slap that one up. Something to mention, chums. Every time I've been flying to these monoliths, I get scanned by blinking sentinels. Yeah, they don't like me. I've got some contraband. So I'm using my magic wand to stay permanently invisible to sort of dodge the little freaking gits. Yeah, I've got a video on how to make yourself a perpetual magic one that makes you invisible. I'll put it up there. Go check it out. Heck yes. Anyway, I need to activate the stone. I'll be right back. Right, okay. Let's interacticate with this and let's see what happens now. My hands are drawn irresistibly towards the monolith. Its ancient surface alive with the power of Atlantium. I can get freaking stuck to the thing again, aren't I? As I make contact, my vision flashes. <laughs> The world is the same, but everything is different. <laughs> it sounds like coming out of lockdown. Freaking heck did the world change. Yes, most shops are closed. Complete the construction. The shell will remember the life it had before. Okay, pretty nice. At my feet lies the shattered components of a broken robot, arranged by an unknown hand in a position of supplication. Its broken body calls out to me to complete it. Build the head from sentinel parts. Build the legs from ship parts, yes. Build the arms from multi-tool parts. Now, people, I've already done all this once before, yeah? And I forgot to turn my mic on. <laughs> and I done pick multi-tool parts. And the robot that I'd done just carried on digging for eternity to the centre of the planet. Gone from lost forever. So this time I'm going to go build the legs from starship parts. I would say build the head from sentinel parts, but it's probably going to get super aggressive and go mental. So that's my guess. So I'm going to do this. There we go. I assemble a pair of legs from the shattered robot using parts salvaged from my own starship. The construct stirs even before my work is completed. Hydraulic tubing twitches as vital fluid begins to flow through their scavenged veins. Before I know it, they're on their feet. They bound their way without a second glance, destined for who knows what adventure. The monolith releases me from this vision. The robot has gone, their body replaced by a pair, pile of useful looking scrap. Okay. Lovely. Um, 
Well, that one buggered off as well. So the other one dug to the centre of the earth. This one just legged it into yonder. God knows what happens if you choose the sentinel head. Um, I'm half, I'm half tempted to do a reload and find out. Okay, well, Should we do try it? that again, <laughs> shall we? Um. Oh, did it do a frick? Oh, it done a bloody. Oh, sod it. It done an automatic freaking thing. I can't be asked to mess about with it. I'll probably never get back there. I don't like the new auto freaking save feature. It's a little bit shite, isn't it, people? It really is. Anyway, let's press on on. Yeah, I'll do the next one. Yeah, let us know in the comments. If you chose Sentinel Head, what happens? Okey, pokey, diddly, dokey. Let's interact with this one. The, the, the pull of the moral lip is irresistible. The Atlantium sings to me. Desperate to be heard, I reach out, ready to accept its vision. Deafy deaf. Defy deaf. Deafy deaf. <laughs> Defy death. Cheers, existence. Reality ripples as the monolith's words carry me away. I drift through an endless sea of stars. I'm sailing away. Turning over here to her better day. The word is a distant memory. I'm nothing but aware. <laughs> there you go, let's give it some silicate powder. The stars begin to slip away, and my mind focuses on a single point. With a rush, I am returned to life in a brand new body. Everything is dark. I try to move, but with every fire of my being is deeply unfamiliar. Nevertheless, I feel war and strength ripple through my core. Raw strength, I guess. With a roar, rawr. I erupt out of the darkness. I soar above the planet now. Colossal, writhing. I am magnificent. A titan. All too soon the song of the Atlantid fades and the monolith returns to my own body. I wonder if I just became a giant majestic jumping worm creature or maybe a leviathan. Who freaking knows? But it sounds similar. It sounds like that, doesn't it? With a roar. I think it's like those giant worm creatures. Anyways, um, yeah, I digress. We came that for a second or two. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? That every traveller could become a giant mega worm. Anyway, let's let's um, head on over to the next monolith after I've scanned for one. Well, chums, the game just took me back to a monolith that I've already visited. So you know what? I think we've kind of exhausted all the monoliths on this planet. I'll just fly to a neighbouring planet and set the same system, maybe. And have a look at what we've got there. So discoveries, boom. I just jumped to one of these other planets. Oh, there's a Star Bramble one there. Now, there's quite a lot of bases in this system. So I've just disconnected from network. Maybe that's why it's lost my monolith count or something. Who freaking knows? But I'll see you at the other planet, just in case you're wondering how the actual freaking surroundings changed. Okay, well, I've arrived, located at somebody's base. I may as well take a quick look, my name. Yeah, pretty cool. It's got all the little storage containers and... Yeah, actually it's not that cool, is it? Anyways, let's hit on up the next sort of place that I need to go to. We go to a monolith on this side. I thought this was a Star Bramble planet. Okay, maybe I landed on the wrong freaking planet. Oh, who cares? Right, yeah, it's got ancient bones though and copper, paraffinium. I think it is. I think it is a Star Bramble. Oh, I freaking don't know. Right, anyway, let's call in the actual exocraft. Here we are. Lovely jubbly. It just looks like a swamp planet, doesn't it? Okay, there we are, and boom. It's not monolith. Monolith has been detecticated. Yes, I want to get out of the frickin' exocraft. Why does it not let me out of it? There we go. Right, I'll see you at the monolith, people. Oh, okay, people. I actually landed on this planet rather than the tropical planet. That one's got bases on. This one's got bases on. It's, it's a pretty active system. Just wondering whether I've landed in a hub or something, but I don't see any weird naming convention going on here or anything like that, so I don't think it's interrupting with someone's hub. But there's a lot of bases, so something's going on here. Anyway, let's head on over and let's go and interact with my purple circle, I guess, and let's see if this one now works. There we are. Might as well show you these steps why I contemplate whether I'm intruding into some area of space that I shouldn't be in. I really wish we could register hubs properly with inside of the Galactic Atlas. So if, it's, if somebody is building something, they can let the world know, hey, stay out of this system. Anyway, let's hit this up. Boom. Okay, the monolith resonates with Atlantium, seeps within its core. A voice, impossibly old, impossibly low, is magnified as the stone vibrates. The feeling is overwhelming. My eyes begin to swim. Look at them swim. Well, look at them swim. Mm, lovely swimming eyes. I don't know how eyes swim. Her core was destroyed. An explosion in the water. None of us could escape the pain. Wow. Okay. 
Fine. I blink to clear my vision. Go. Oh, my eyes reopen. I find myself afloat in the waveless purple sea. The sky glows. The voice has become a chant. Its words filling the water around me. Might as well swim. We've had a lot of stuff about swimming, haven't we, so far? Let's hit swim. In the distance, walls of crystals erupt from the depths. <laughs> Fountains of lattice-tinted water sparkle in the light. Crystal foam arcs through the air as the sea is displaced. Biblical. One by one, Malhal spires are thrown from the core. It is beautiful. Unimaginable, but quite dangerous. One by one, these cliffs begin to close in on me. You see what I mean? And I realise, I turn, I begin to swim, but they are coming for me. I feel the bubbles surround me, the water beneath me vibrates, and I feel my, myself start to sink. I hear the roar of the crystal races through the sea. I, I, at the moment the crystal wall overtakes my body, I'm released. It is done. That sounded a little bit like a freaking insurance claim, didn't it? All right, fine. There we are. I call in my old exocraft and I'll do the steps again. I'll see you again soon, people. Right here, people. I've arrived at Coded and I've activated, obviously. Here we go. As the Atlantean floods through the monolith, images floods into my head, seizing my mind as their own. Get off. That's my mind. I feel myself floating across the surface of the world. I see it all. Every rock, every tree, every creature. They are safe. I am safe. Some shells still fill their sentinel ancestor. Look through the red eyes, fill their despair. Luckily I didn't build a freaking head out of a sentinel then, eh? Then I feel it, pain, sharp, deep, piercing. My vision flashes red. <laughs> I'm hurled around and I see my tormentor, a vandal thoughtlessly vaporizing the minerals that surrounded them. Each atom they claimed ripped through the fiber of my beings. I'm going to destroy the Vandals. Take that, Vandal. I open fire. The invader falls. Where they stand, the vision fades. And only their stolen harvest remains. Yes, Vandal. You've been vandalised. Thank you, Az. Cool. I understand none of the auto pages went up, so I guess that was a winner-winner chicken dinner. Okay, right. Okay, anyhow, let's um call in the old frickin' exocraft and uh, hit on up the next one. Oh no, not an incoming storm, I need my umbrella. Umbrella mode, activated. Right here, will I climb the stairs? And let's hit this up. I guess, Japan. As the Atlantean resonates within the monolith, words written in my own language glow faintly on its surface. I reach out to touch the ruins. Accept your destiny. Time will corrode us all. I guess, I'm feeling that corrosion myself. I feel a deep itching in my arms. I look down at my hands. A red brown pattern spreads across my skin. Slowly at first, then accelerating. Ah! Damn you, patination. I try to clutch my fingers, but they will not move. Ah! Look, they're all freaking weird. I strain as they snap. Ah! Oh, great flakes of rust fall from my hands. Ah, oh, my fingers disintegrate. That's some disintegrating. Okay, there you are. Let's... Where did... Feel the passion. Yeah. I should get some kind of Oscar. Okay, here we go. Where the rust hits the ground, it begins to spread. Red and dark, stale metallic blood. It consumes my legs. Oh, for fudge's sake. I can't really get my legs on camera, people. I cannot move. I feel my heart clog. <laughs> I try to scream. <laughs> Like that. Okay, there we go. I'm going to embrace it, budget. Yeah. As I relax, I see the stars begin to spread across the sky. Countless years pass. Plants seed themselves in me. Animals feed upon my remains. I crumble and I am reborn into the universe and a thousand new lives. Like a sea of consciousness, people. That's kind of my own belief system. I made a video on this. I guess it did. I open my eyes, the vision and all of its million years over in a second. Oh, look, and I found myself another fossil. Yes, we're getting lots of fossils. Nice. Well, thank you very much, fossil. Mummified carvings. Why the fudge not? Lovely jubbly. Okay, that's my little second trinket. Oh, my days. There's a freaking Thundercat running around here, people. Well, well I'm calling my exocraft. I've got to be careful because he's a predatory guy. Heck yes, he is. Jump in here. 
Let's do a little scan. Find another monolith. Chick bam. And uh, let's lock in, said Monolith. Where are you, Monolith? Monolith, Monolith, where are you? There's a bitey creature around here. I don't want to stand around any longer than I need to. Okay, where's that bitey creature gone? Okay, he's, he's gone. Lovely. Let's go. Fly to the air. I'll see you at the next Monolith. Okay, we've arrived, okay? Just look at him. Isn't he majestic? Yeah, it's got a giant shark fin for a head. Freaking lovely. Okay, well, let's hit this up then. Let's see what's next. Okay, the monolith alive with Atlantium shows me a galaxy of stars, glittering points of light in all directions. I hear a voice that hums with the words of millions. Pity the convergence. No individual entity has value. None will remember them. As the voice fades, I feel a pinprick. One of the stars flares briefly, then flickers to nothing. A temporary sensation, insignificant to the tapestry before me. Remember the flare. Forget the flare. Do nothing. Well, if I'm part of this collective that doesn't care, fudge it, do nothing. The flare is forgotten as it once was an atom in my lungs, both vital and insignificant all at once. The galaxy is a multitude. And there is no lone star that can be perceived when your sight extends so, so far. My perception wraps as the vision washes away and the life returns to scale. And call. It kind of does make you feel a little bit insignificant and insurmountable in the grand scheme of things. But two little vendors just appeared there, people. Lovely jubbly. Anyway, we need to press on on. We can't be distracted by trinkets. No, heck no. We're on a mission to learn stuff, people. We're learning as we go. I guess we are. The law. Righto. Let's, um, let's just on up another monolith. Then. I'll see you there, people. Okay. Well, I've approached. Yes, there we go. I've arrived, located. The monolith crackles as I approach, a lantium arcing through the air. I hear a voice of Corvax echoes, and I close my eyes. Save the divergent mind, defy the convergence. The voice is clear now. They demand my judgment. The mind of the divergent entity is placed before me, and their place in the convergence is a question. Delete the convergence. Okay. Permit thy divergence, quarantine the entity. Solid, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what I'm being told. I'm going to delete the divergence. I choose deletion. The convergence must be protected. The many must be preserved. Then why give me the freaking option, mate? Yeah. The voice murmurs in approval. And the vision ends. Okay, got approval for that. I really thought the whole world would be torn asunder. All right, cool. I learned nothing new. Yeah, I like to live life dangerously, people. What can I say? All right, well, that wasn't that dangerous then, apparently. It did freaking nothing. I have chose the other option when I would when I didn't have my mic on. I did the whole freaking playthrough. I put it live for members and everything. And they actually come back and said, Captain Steve, you might not want to put that video live. There's no audio. <sighs> freaking gutted. I hope this one works. Okay, I interact with said monolith. Here we are. I hear the distant voices of the Corvax entity who once worshipped here. And yet there are other voices, dissonant, unmistakable, growing louder. I close my eyes and listen. Is this the one that I had at the very start? Have we done the full circuit of these now? Many were erased at the time of her death. In darkness and in glass we waited. Yes, this is where I made the uh, joke about the padded trousers. Yes, I open my mind, but all I see is darkness. And we've got all the clickings. We've got all the clickings. Yeah, let's just go through this. And I just choose. So you can choose something different this time. I chose dislocate last time, didn't I? Let's choose scream. Another click and it's gone. The screams, the smell, the fire, the chaos. Exactly the same statements as I got before. This is not oblivion. It's exactly the same as I got in the first one. So sometimes it doesn't matter what you choose. You get exactly the same text. You get exactly the same outcome. But I would like to know what happens if you choose a sentinel head. But that's pretty much everything, people. That's all the law for you guys in the view of us. I guess it is. Let's uh, jump out. Let's make myself a little bit bigger on the screen while I go save my actual game. So there you go, people. That's the autophage law, if you want to call it the autophage law, or whether you want to call it the Atlantium law. I don't know what law cycle this is to be called. Whether you call it the Corvax monolith law. There's all sorts that you could call it, I suppose. I'll have to wait and see what the wiki chimes in with. It's probably already updated and I just haven't checked. I've been lazy. 
Anyway, people inside the viewer bus, if you like this video and how I delivered the lore, I make videos on No Man's Sky a lot. It's the main game I cover on this channel. I do cover other games. But yes, if you like what you see, hit subscribe, hit the like, hit the notification bell. If you've already done that, share this video with friends. I am trying to reach 2 billion subscribers and I'm on 30,000 right now. So there's a lot of bus impresses, but you know, we can get there. Let's uh, keep our wits up. Anyway, cheerio bye, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.